in our series, Taking Hold of the Promises of God, a book study in the book of Joshua. And um, last Sunday in 22, we studied how Joshua commended, actually, if you read the scripture here, commended the two and a half tribes, the tribe of the Reubenites, Gadites, and the half tribe of Manasseh, because of, of them fulfilling their God-given mission. And what is that? Janet was very clear. It's a very encouraging message. And I believe it's, it was not an accident that we're meeting for the first time in person while I was sharing for this. I didn't plan this. It just exactly fell on the Sunday that we're going to meet together. So it was really, really planned ahead of time. Mm -hmm. But yet the message is clear that we should not just think about us taking hold of our taking hold of God, what God had promised to us, but to make sure that we stand and fight together with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm -hmm. Because that is a God given mission mm -hmm. that, that, that the Lord had given the, the two, two and a half tribes or the Eastern tribes or the Transjordan tribe, uh, all of those descriptions, of course, when you read that in the commentaries. But yet, it was uh, the, the, the application for us is this, that we are not just supposed to think about ourselves, but we should think about others. That how can we be an encouragement? How can we fight with them? not against each other? How could we support and help? Not a hindrance to our brothers and sisters mm -hmm. as we go through this journey in our walk with God. Yes. But yet, if you want to open your Bible to uh, Joshua chapter 22, I stopped in verse, I think, uh, uh, 10, um, uh, 9 last Sunday, and we're going to continue because this is a huge chapter because what we're going to see here, continuing in chapter 22, that we will witness here a crisis that's going to happen. So just like in any other relationships, mm -hmm. you know, there will be a crisis that would take place here that will develop and their relationship will be tested mm -hmm. uh, between the unity of the nation, unity among the tribes, unity among the people. There will be strain and tensions that they're going to feel in sense between the tribes, between the, the nation. A, a once united nation, we will see that now sits in almost like a civil war that's going to happen. And, and this is, of course, uh, I believe this is something that we could relate with. This, is, this story is very familiar to us, Jen, because how many times have we have people that we have called friends, people that are close to us? Imagine these people are, you know, willing to fight together, die together, but yet now they're almost seems like ready to kill each other. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's the actual description here. Uh -huh. it's because we've had those kind of situations, right? I don't know about you, the people that you've called friends, people that are very close to you, people that are dear to you, but yet you are no longer in good speaking terms with them right now. And this is the situation. These are the same tribes that, that, that pledged that they would fight that they would stand together, but yet now we're going to read what's going to happen. And here's what I wanted to share before I share some lessons that we're going to learn in this story. And here's the main point here, because relationships will be tested. Mm -hmm. Relationships will be tested. Either relationship in church, relationship in your family, husband and wife, brothers and sisters, you know, parents and kids, friendship. It will be tested. Mm -hmm. And we could see that here. And it is interesting because these are very close people. Imagine last Sunday they were willing to die for each other. Mm -hmm. uh, but yet now they are willing to kill each other because mm -hmm. of some relational tension. Wow. And here's what we're going to read. And we're going to start in verse 10. When they came to Gileoth near the Jordan in the land of Canaan, the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh built an imposing altar there by the Jordan. Mm -hmm. So they built an altar, 11, and when the Israelites heard that they had built the altar on the border of Canaan at Gileoth near the Jordan on the Israelite side, the whole assembly of Israel gathered at Shiloh to go to war against them. Mm -hmm. Wow. wow. Woo. The, whole assembly. the whole assembly. So nine, uh, 12 minus 2 and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're looking about the 8 and a half tribe here. Mm -hmm. 9? Yeah. 12 okay. minus 2 and a half. Okay. So something like that. <laughs> 9 and a half. Okay. So, yeah. So, see, we're not good at math. So, <laughs> as you can see, decided to fight, to go to war against these brothers because of the situation here because they what they built an altar 
the relationship between the unity of the tribes or the brothers and the spiritual family for love and description is going to be tested here. The brothers that fought and stood together are now ready to fight. Mm -hmm. each and other. each other. Mm -hmm. Okay, fight each other. Not the enemies, but fight each other. Okay, what happened here? Simple as you read the text. The eastern tribe built an altar on the eastern side of the promised land. Okay, that didn't sit well with the whole nation. And the other tribes reacted by what? And they reacted by going, they decided we're going to go off to war. So what is the reason? Simple as we read this story is that because of a simple misunderstanding caused by false assumption, false accusation, and fear. Okay, caused by false assumption, an accusation, and fear. And this is what we're going to look at today. I believe this is a very, very good story for us to read. And imagine the closeness of these tribes. Imagine that you fought with these people together. You went through fighting the, you know, seeing, crossing the river, you know, and then Jericho wall falling, you know, sand, stand, sand standing still fighting for seven, eight years together. Now you are ready to go. They went to, they, they, they went back home and now because of what they did, the whole nation reacting and now they're ready to face, to go to war. So what lesson can we uh, learn from here? And we're going to go through this and let me share to you some few things here. And of course, we're going to stay on the text because we have to find, <laughs> we have to study the text, the Bible, because we cannot just make this out of thin air. So here's some lessons that we could learn from this story when we have tensions, when the relationship, when a relationship is tested, mm -hmm. what are you going to do? This is the story mm -hmm. of this Genesis chapter 22. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Okay, I'm asking you as you're watching right now. I wish I could see your faces like, like last Sunday, but are you ready? All right. So my, the her productions there at the back saying they are. So let me share to you two things here, uh, three things. Number one, it is wrong to judge people's motives. We must first get all the facts. Mm. It is wrong. Let me say that again. It is wrong to judge people's motives. We must first get all the facts. Mm -hmm. Regardless if it is a friendship, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, family relationships, in any relationship, you know, it will be tested once there's tension, once you have felt like there seems like you wanted to kill each other first before you react. Here's the things that we need to understand. It is wrong to judge people's motives. We must first get all the facts. Mm -hmm. All right. So where is this? Let's continue reading because what happened ready. Re remember, they're ready to go off to war. So they sent Phineas, but we're going to jump to verse 15. Okay. Phineas and the. And the 10 uh, and the leaders, as you could see that in verse, actually verse 13. So the Israelites sent Phineas, son of Eleazar, it's not on your screen, the priest to the land of Gilead, the Reuben, God, and the top tribe of Manasseh. With him they sent 10 of the chief men, uh, one of each of the tribes of Israel, the head of the family division among the Israelites. And now verse 15, it will be on your screen. It says, when they went out to Gilead, to Reuben, God, and the half tribe of Manasseh, they said to them, so they went, all right? Look at this. The whole assembly of the Lord says, how could you, I underline that, break faith with the God of Israel like this? How could you turn away from the Lord and build yourself an altar and rebellion against him? Look at the, look at the, look at the dialogue here. How could you? There is that uh, accusation that's being hurled. Mm -hmm. Okay, without getting all the facts, how could you do this? Because remember, they reacted. They built an altar without even knowing what the reason is. They went out and ready to go off to war. Mm -hmm. But yet, I have to commend them though that they came there. They sent the... They sent an envoy mm -hmm. actually to find out what was going on. But yet, look at the dialogue here. How could you? Mm -hmm. How can it be? That you, oh sorry, that was just, I'm thinking about a song. How can it be? How, no, sorry. How could you break faith with the God of Israel? How could you turn away from the Lord and build yourself an altar of rebellion against it now? So there was that. You are building an altar. This is a rebellion. This is, you are what? Disobeying before the Lord. That was the assumption here. This is actually an accusation. 
So look at this. Was not the sin of Peor enough for us? Up to this very day, we have not cleansed ourselves from that sin, even though a plague fell on the community of the Lord. Are, and are you now turning away from the Lord? The assumption here is that they have built an altar. It is because of what? They are turning away from the Lord or they are disobeying from God. Mm -hmm. That was the assumption. Mm -hmm. Again, going back, it is wrong to judge people's motives. We must first get all the facts. The assumption is because you built this altar is that you are disobeying from the Lord. I have to commend actually the nation of Israel is because they are they don't want the whole community to sin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they know the effect yeah. of what will happen. You have to understand where these people are coming from. Yes, on both sides. Okay, I'm not leaning, I'm not choosing both sides here. I'm going to present to you the mistake of both. So on the first part here, they are assuming, but you have to understand they're coming from the heart of preserving the whole nation because they don't want the nation being punished by God. Mm -hmm. But yet in their zeal to protect that, they were quick to what? Judge, Judge people. Mm -hmm. Because of the action that was created without knowing all the facts. So this is very important. It is important to get all the facts, remembering that there are always two sides of every dispute. So especially if you have a friend coming to you and that person has a you know uh, uh, has been hurt by someone offended by someone remember you're hearing only one side of the story before you react you must hear the other side of the story even though because the temptation is this you always lean more to what to believe your friend or your someone that you're close to but yet there's always two sides of the story. Don't fall for that trap. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. We can't. So in any relationship, Jen, in marriage, in dealing with your kids, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have two. And uh, this is gonna be this has been a, a very um, uh, educational for us as far as uh, you know sitting down and talking and finding facts and instead of just judging people mm -hmm. yes okay making because assumptions. making assumptions very important mm -hmm. especially also in our church right. because you have someone that you are uh, same small group victory group with and now something happened there was an action that was done but yet you interpret that as ha because he, that person did this because maybe this is then we get mad for no reason we have to find all the facts we have we can't judge people mm -hmm. right away mm -hmm. jesus said that we can't judge do not judge yeah. because only god can do that because he could read people's mind and would understand the motives of people we can't mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we can't yeah all right let me just read this from Fatuma. Fatuma says, It's always good to understand all, all perspective. It's too easy to go with your own preconceived thoughts or understanding. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. On point. On point. Mm -hmm. On point. So as we look at this story, this is what happened. They built an altar. The nation reacted. They went out there. They're ready to go off to war. But yet, I'm glad that they had a discussion first. All right? So, but yet, we can't. You have to find out. Number two, also here is fear can lead to reckless decisions that may ruin relationships. Mm -hmm. So this is the reaction. Now we're going to look at the motive now of why they do it. So as you could see, uh, they reacted, of course. They said, of course, we are not turning away from the Lord, according to the Gadites and the Reubenites. So actually, they said this, if we rebel against the Lord, okay, by building by us for ourselves, then... That God judge us in a sense. That was the conversation there. But yet you would see the underlying reasons why they built the altar. And let me read it to you in verse 24. No, we did it for the what? For fear that someday your descendants might say to ours, what do you have to do with the Lord, the God of Israel? Interesting, for fear. So again, I have to say, Jen, uh, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, quite... Uh, as they were explaining, this is uh, this reasoning is valid mm -hmm. because again um, they feel like they're going to be rejected, they're going to be excluded from the whole community because they live on the other side yeah. 
of the promised land. So they built an altar as a replica, not to worship there, but as a remembrance of the covenant between the tribes or that they are included, but their fear uh -huh. that they're part of it, but they fear is that they will be rejected. This is fear, but yet to be specific, this is fear of rejection. That's why fear can lead to reckless decisions that may ruin relationships. Mm -hmm. And how many times we have that we have done that? Yeah. Because out of fear, and we just create or do something like, oh, I feel like, you know, my spouse doesn't love me. So fear, it's not founded, just in speculation. Then we do something. Mm -hmm. Instead of creating some unity, we what, ruin relationships, decisions. Mm -hmm. And for them, because of that fear, they said, oh, we're going to build an altar. Mm -hmm. They could have just approached the whole nation and said, hey, we're going to go build an altar, but this is not, you know, to rebel against the Lord, but we just wanted to, you know, maybe create, uh, what, a sign, a symbol. And they could have said, yeah, maybe we could, maybe not an altar, but something else. You know, a good conversation. But yet they reacted out of fear because they don't want to be rejected. Look at verse 25. The Lord has made the Jordan a boundary between us and you. You reurbanized and Godites, you have no share in the Lord. So your descendants might cause ours to stop fearing the Lord. Okay? That, that is why we said, let us get ready and build an altar, but not for born offerings and, or sacrifices. On the contrary, is to be a witness between us and you and the generations to follow. Great reasoning. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. they were thinking about the next generation. They were thinking that the, 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 the next generation will not forget the Lord as well. Great thinking. That we will worship the Lord at His sanctuary with our burnt offering, sacrifices, and the fellowship offerings. But yet, the problem is this. It was what? Done out of fear. Mm -hmm. Not out of love. Out of unity. Mm -hmm. Out of relationships. It was done, not done out of to build relationship, though that's the motive, but yet the expression mm -hmm. is not good. Mm -hmm. So they build an altar because of fear, because they feared that they will be rejected. As I see this, Jen, so many times I've seen this even in church or in, our, in families, you know, even in my own personal uh, walk and personal relation um, in my personal life and so my relationship with my either immediate family or brothers and sisters and siblings sometimes if I do things out of fear usually it doesn't lead to relationship being built but actually it leads to relationship being destroyed or being wrecked mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. any comment on that? no it's a, I'm thinking about you know times in my relationships where I have reacted in fear and I have done that several times it's like because there's fear in you you freak out and you it comes out wrong and the other you know and the way it comes out is not you know encouraging or they don't see your heart why you're doing that because you're just reacting out of fear and just freaking out instead of so instead of them understanding that hey, this person cares for me, you know, is, instead of, you know, having that kind of conversation, you know, it could be led to misinterpretation because of it. fear actually makes you respond a different way. It's exactly. not an encouraging way. It's, you know, so uh, very interesting mm -hmm. how it's actually a non-issue. <laughs> Just like you talking, you know, telling us this story, it's like, so what's the issue? Why why would you have to go to war? Like, you know, you're almost about to kill each other for what? Yeah, you know? and exactly when you look at all the arguments that happens in exactly. family, in relationships, when you actually sit down, it's really none issues, most of them. Yeah. Minor stuff, but yet it's blown More out of proportion. proportion. Yeah. Because of this. So this is what it is. And I, and I think um, we have to be careful. We are all susceptible to this. Yeah. We have experienced this in our own marriage. Exactly. We're in, when I reacted out of fear, instead of sitting down with you first and asking you what was going on. So I reacted based on my fear to be rejected. So instead of be, bringing healing, it created more distance. And my action actually aggravated the whole situation. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and I think this is a great lesson. Mm -hmm. As you could see, the, the thing is that these people fought together. 
Yeah. They're willing to die for each yeah. other. Now they want to kill each other. Yeah. <laughs> so. And I, I love what you said because, you know, we are prone to really making assumptions about people even though we know them. And that's what's hurtful all the more because yeah. if, if you know each other, you have a relationship with each other, and yet you make false assumptions towards each other based on what? You know, right. and you should have known each other better. Mm -hmm. You know, in a sense, like you should have known how to how this person would respond if you just if you just spoken to that person. You mm -hmm. know, I think that's where sometimes the tension comes in because we don't. Um, there's just a lot of assumptions. Yes. We, instead and, of, and, and, and I wanted to touch that, Jen. And I'm glad that you brought that up. I think because again, we know even if just for example, for you and me or for someone that we love that having, you know, there's our relationship being tested. Most of the time, here's what I realize. And I'm saying this because I'm not an expert. It's because I've just experienced it, okay? So what, what I realized is that what you mentioned a while ago is that because even though that we know that we that person loves us, that, that person cares for us, but sometimes our reaction actually is based on our fear. Mm, yeah. Based on our insecurities. Yeah. Right. And that's why that insecurity comes out as a fear, and then we um, create or we react based on that. Mm -hmm. Even though on the other side, sometimes that was not the one being communicated, but yet we react. Mm -hmm. Because that's that's our insecurity. That's our fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So mm -hmm. now, having said that, here's number three, and I believe this is uh, one of the solutions here, as we can see that number three lesson here a frank and open discussion done with love with the spirit of love and gentleness will often clear the air and lead to reconciliation mm -hmm. keyword often because it's not 100 percent guaranteed mm -hmm. when i wrote this a frank and open discussion look at the openness in this discussion mm -hmm. so how we, you know they were speaking the truth they were not hiding what they're feeling they were not hiding uh the, you know the, the the situation or sweeping it sweeping it under the rug they are brutally honest in the discussion here's what we feel because we feel like you have disobeyed the lord you violated the covenant and now we're ready to go off to war and they said no look at the response from the two and a half tribes from the Gadites, reubenites and the manasseh they were saying no this is what's actually what has been happening so i love this because going back to verse 13 it's not on the screen so they I love that the assembly did the right approach. Number one, they sent the right people. Number yeah. one, Phineas, if you read that in verse 13, Phineas, son of Elias, are the priest. Mm -hmm. So he is a priest. Yeah. Phineas is a priest. So very important. The it often discussion, you have to have envoys that are close to the Lord mm -hmm. to help you mediate, right? So mm -hmm. I love this. So they didn't send the hot-headed people yeah. because they're already ready to war. I don't the general know. or the commanders. <laughs> no, the chief priest, not the, the warriors, mm -hmm. you know, at this particular situation because if not, egos and uh, hot-headedness, I think, will not resolve the situation. Mm -hmm. Having the right people, right? So when finesse the priest and the leaders of the... And what happened was, look at this. Verse 30, it's there on your screen. When Phineas, the priest, and the leaders of and the leaders of the community, the heads of the clans of the Israel, I want I understand heard what Reuben, Gadites, and Manasseh had to say. They were willing to sit down and an hear. honest mm -hmm. and open discussion. They were willing to sit down and hear the other mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. I love this gen. Mm -hmm. They heard what they were saying. They were not just there to what? To win an argument, but they're actually there to resolve the situation. So many times that what happens when we are um, having uh, uh, difficult situations with close family members or friends is because we are there to prove a point, sometimes to win an argument. Sometimes, here's what I've always said in marriage counseling, sometimes you would win an argument, but you would lose in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Which one would you want? Mm -hmm. So the right people... The chiefs, honest discussion, open discussions. The discussion was passionate, but they all came down what? They all came to sit down and to take time to listen. And I believe so many times misunderstanding doesn't lead to reconciliation because we are ready to prove a point, right? That we are right rather than to heal and mend the relationship. 
Sometimes it's not just being right. The spirit and the attitude of mending and healing. Sometimes you got hurt. That's why God wants us to forgive. You're always going to get hurt. Because especially with tensions with people that are very close to you. It's going to hurt. Do you think this thing didn't hurt the whole nation? But yet they found out that it was not something that they should be uh, concerned about. Mm -hmm. So let me just read this. Um, uh, Leslie Gutierrez says, Nice Sito fam listening to this while in the QC civil registry. All right. Good good one, Leslie. Onoshina Bo said, this is so timely. I, in parenting, sometimes I am being reactive instead of being proactive. This is a great lesson in so many aspects of our lives, like how we parent our kids. We react easily when they tend to resist from what we are telling them. However, we can know that God holds our lives and we are not in control. Love will cover a multitude of sins and we will easily understand each other. You know, I think more than anything else I wanted to say is that just like God, God is always ready to listen. I think if we have this attitude of just like they heard, a listening ear, that's why it's very important. I always said this, God gave us two ears and one mouth mm -hmm. to listen more and to talk less. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's going to be a challenge because I love to talk. So that's why I have to ask God, Lord, help me to what? And, and here's the right thing to do here. And sometimes we have to put ourselves in their shoes. For us to be able to have their perspective and why they're doing those. Mm -hmm. If we are not willing to do that, then it's going to be a problem. Especially in this day and age. Because this, the whole world is polarized, especially here in the U.S. It's either you're in the left or in the right. No more coming and sitting down together in the middle to be able to hear each other. Mm -hmm. The easiest thing right now is just to cancel people. I don't like what you're saying. I'm just going to cancel you. Mm -hmm. Cancel culture. Mm -hmm. But yet, that's not what it is. Mm -hmm. So if they have just canceled each other in this situation, oh, yeah. they could have killed each other. Yeah. And now we bring that into the family. We don't want to sit down. We don't want to listen. Ah, I'm going to just cancel you. That's not what it is. Mm. We, the, it is hard, you know, to have a frank and open discussion. But yet this is vital, especially for Filipino culture, because we don't like confrontation. And confrontation is always viewed as negative. It is not. Because what we're seeing here, this is a confrontation. Yes. But yet done in the right spirit. When I say con confrontation, you don't have to be shout, shouting for you to be able to what? To get your point across? No. Gentleness, love, okay? Pausing, hearing each other, letting other person speak so that they could also, you could also hear what they need to say. Mm -hmm. Let me just read this um, from uh, Fatuma. When we're hurt and react from that place of pain and fear and you can't listen. If we go on with the wrong intentions, being right, things only get worsened. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because the, the initial in that reaction when you're hurting and you're in pain is to not listen. Mm -hmm. And also to inflict pain to others. That's right. Yeah. You hurt me, I'm going to hurt you. You said those words, guess what? I'm going to say nastier words than what you said. Mm -hmm. Then it's a peace in contest. Mm -hmm. No more hearing. Yeah. Whoever speaks the loudest mm -hmm. wins. But at this point, if that would be the case, then there would be no more nation of Israel. Yeah. It ended. Mm -hmm. Joshua chapter, you know, Joshua chapter 24 ended with, and they all killed each other, and they all died in the promised land. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's just so sad. Yeah, you got in the promised land, but then you killed each other. Exactly. And I case. think that's the problem for most of us mm -hmm. as Christians is that God already redeemed us. And you go to church and you have some tensions in our relationship in church, in the family, or any, anywhere else. But yet we're not willing to sit down. We're not willing to forgive. Mm -hmm. Then who wins? The enemy wins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what's the ending? Crisis resolved. Going back to this in verse uh, 31. 31. I think this is in verse 31, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And here's what it says. And Phineas, son of Eleazar, the priest said, Reubenite, God has God in the man. said, Today we know that the Lord is with us because you have not act acted unfaithfully toward the Lord in his matter, in this matter. Now you have rescued the Israelites from the Lord's hand. Wow. 
the Lord is with us. See how the presence of the Lord is mm -hmm. highlighted because of our unity, yeah. highlighted the nature, highlighted who God is when we walk together in unity, mm -hmm. when we walk together in understanding each other. Mm -hmm. the, the, the whole character of the Lord, the glory, God gets the glory. God is glorified. I think that's what I want to say. When we do all of those things to make sure that we are reconciled or we are pursuing reconciliation instead of just killing each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, they both wanted the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, they were like, I don't want to... I don't want to, you know, be on the bad side of God because I don't, I, we've experienced that before. We don't want to be away from God's presence. And the other one also is the same. Like the, the Reubenites, the Gadites, yep. and the half-tribe of Manasseh, they're like, we built this altar because we don't want to be separated from, you know, we want our next generation to uh, have the fear of the Lord as yep. well and be partakers of what the Lord has, you know, given to us. And in the same way, that's exactly what they both like wanted. That's what they wanted. <laughs> and so it's good that they came together, came together, have a frank and honest, you know, and open and discussion, discussion, which is very important. Let me just read what Jesse wrote. It's also a good reminder for the people who are hearing or receiving the news to have a sound mind when responding to a news that yet confirmed. That's right. I believe that. And I think more than anything else, here's what uh, my... my um, the standard, at least for me, is that I'm not going to react. I'm going to pray and I pray to the Lord that I'm not going to react until I hear the other side of the story. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just react out of just one side of the story. That's not what it is. Mm -hmm. So until you hear the other side, then don't say anything. Mm -hmm. Don't say anything. Because usually what's going to happen is that you're going to say some stuff that you will regret. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've learned that the hard way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or make decisions. Yeah, or make decisions yeah. based yeah. on, again, fear or reckless ones. And, you know, based on your insecurity, don't make decisions until you hear the other side of the story. Mm -hmm. Gather all the facts. Very important. Yeah. So this is so good. I mean, uh, I agree with everybody. It, we could apply this in any relationship that we have. I mm -hmm. think this is a classic communication issue that you know either a lack of or you know a an assumption assumptions that are not you know yes. um, unfounded assumptions and i think um uh this has been an issue a long time ago and uh, we still have not learned from <laughs> from and this is a hard and, one and that's why i think the, the first thing that i've said a while ago is that from the very beginning is that relationships will be tested yes. and i think if Put that in your brain. Mm -hmm. Relationships will be tested. So now that said, that would be relationship between spouse, uh, you know, uh, siblings, children, parents, you know, friends. It will be tested. Co-workers. And now there's going to be things that are going to happen. Now, three things, okay, as we look at this story, okay? Don't judge the motives. Get all the facts. Mm -hmm. Number two, fear can lead to reckless decisions. Don't make reckless decisions until again. You hear all the facts because it will ruin relationships. And lastly, have a frank and open discussion done with the right spirit. And what is that? Love and gentleness. Often clear the air and lead to reconciliation. Mm -hmm. If we do this, I think, then mm -hmm. I think in any relationship that is being strained or there's a tension, I think at the end of the day, here's what it is. The day... We have known that the Lord is with us because you have not acted unfaithfully. There's going to be a re reconciliation and the name of the Lord will be honored and glorified. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we must know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah.